In this video of my computer graphics series, I'm going to discuss the remaining matrices involved in mapping the coordinates of an object in its own coordinate system to the screen of your device. These two remaining matrices are for the viewing and projection transforms. If you haven't yet seen my video on the modeling transform, which takes an object from its own coordinate system and maps it into a world coordinate system. I highly recommend you watch that before continuing with this video. Here I have a sort of mock world where I can zoom out and look at this look at this viewing cube of the world where the coordinate system of the world encompasses everything that I'm rendering. But at the same time I have a frustum object and the frustum that I'm rendering can be used as the viewpoint to view just a part of your world. Now, in this video, what I want to do is describe how a viewing transform can basically allow you to render your world from any point within it and observe just the objects that are in line with your viewing axis. The viewing transform converts any point in the world coordinate system to an arbitrary viewer's coordinate system can be broken down into two steps. Step one is translating the point as if the viewpoint is the origin. That is, a given point is rewritten as the difference vector between the point and the viewpoint. Step two is projecting the point into the viewpoint's basis. That is, the new point from step one still assumes the viewpoint has the unit basis vectors along the x, y, and z axes. But if that's not the case, we must project the point along the viewpoint's actual basis vectors, which may not be the unit axis vectors. The matrix from step one is as follows. As we can see, this is just a translation matrix that subtracts the viewpoint from whatever point is being multiplied with it, where Vx, Vy, and Vz are the three components of the viewpoint's coordinates. Step 2 matrix performs the projection along each of the viewpoint's basis vectors. Here, VBX, VBY, and VBZ are the unit basis vectors of the viewpoint, and they are row vectors within the matrix. This ensures that the matrix vector multiplication projects the point from step 1 onto each of the viewpoint axes. Combining the two matrices will yield the following matrix, which is the consolidated viewing matrix or viewing transform. To start with the projection transform, we're going to display an initial matrix structure that will make more sense as we derive the values. To start, we have a matrix with constants A, B, C, and D, and a minus 1 in the bottom row and third column. There's an implicit division of the 4D resulting vector to produce a three-dimensional vector with X, Y, and Z divided by the W prime, uh, the fourth dimension. So first I want to visualize what the projection transform produces. We have a viewing frustum from our viewpoint coordinate system that will clip all points that lie outside its enclosing area. The frustum is parameterized by near and far depth thresholds, top and bottom height thresholds, and left and right horizontal thresholds. We can take a slice of this frustum with the horizontal value fixed at zero and show how the perspective division we produce how with the perspective division we produce a normalized viewing box where depth doesn't need to consider the angle to the viewpoint can exclusively use the z-buffer for depth. Let's start the derivation of our projection matrix by considering what y prime over w prime would map to in the normalized viewing box. We know y prime is equal to the b constant times y when we do our matrix multiplication. We know w prime is always minus z due to that constant minus 1 in the matrix. So y prime divided by w prime is by over minus z. Now I think of the near clipping plane as sort of the screen, and we want to find where the line from the viewpoint to the yz point intercepts the screen. So to do this, we will need to get the slope, which is y over z, rise over run and multiply it by the depth of the near plane, which is n. So the term 
that determines where y is in the near clipping plane, which is ranged from b to t, is n over minus z. But we aren't done there, because we need to normalize the viewable range of b to t into the normalized device coordinates of minus 1 to 1. So we have a second scaling term of 2 over t minus b to produce this normalization. And we can construct b as a sort of product of these two operations, one being finding the intercept with the near clipping plane, and then two being normalizing the near clipping plane into the range of minus 1 to 1. And so the result is b equals 2n over t minus b. And then we can derive a uh, analogously uh, to get 2n over r minus l. Solving for the c and d constants is a little less exact. The ideal equation just squares z so that when we normalize by dividing through by minus z, uh, we get z again. You don't want to lose any depth information. But for a given point, we don't know what the z will be. And so we need to approximate this behavior with our c and d constants. There's numerous versions of the projection matrix that solve for c and d. Uh, I'm going to show one that uses two constraint equations that approximates c and d by ensuring the near and far clipping planes produce the normalized device coordinate depth min and maxes minus 1 and 1 when you substitute z. And so we know our initial equation, z prime over w prime, is cz plus d over minus c. And when we plug in minus n for the near clipping plane and minus f for the far clipping plane, we can set up two constraint equations. And we can solve this linear system for c and d and yield the following results. And now putting it all together, we have built the projection matrix, which takes objects from the viewing coordinate system and maps them to the clipping volume. So in summary, a single 4x4 model view projection matrix can be applied to an object's vertices to map it from its own object coordinate system to the normalized device coordinates. And from the normalized device coordinates, the graphics library can do a really simple scaling to map the coordinates to the pixels of the viewing window. So initially when I was showing my mock world space from an outside perspective, I was also rendering a frustum object. And I've added these helper functions to the frustum object that will pass back a VNP matrix. Um, the VNP matrix will be able to re-render the world from the viewpoint of the viewing frustum. Um, and so I also have this frustum function. Uh, and this was the perspective or the projection matrix that I showed in the uh, in the second last and third last slides. So if we run this and render our world, immediately we can see there are two spheres within the world's viewing system. And when I swap to the viewing position here and the viewing axes of these green, red, and blue lines, we'll see just the objects that should be rendered. And then we can come back out and continue to observe the world from the outside. One thing I did just through experimenting with this program was actually animate the transition to the internal world viewpoint uh, with 100 transition frames. And to do that, I built a derivative matrix with the difference between the current VNP matrices and the VNP matrices that I'm transitioning to. And it actually had uh, quite a good result in animating the transition to the internal viewpoint and out of the internal viewpoint. Um, I also added some keyboard controls. When we're in the scene, I can also move my frustum to look at different objects by changing the angle of the basis or the position of the basis. 
and then I can transition to a viewpoint like that. And additionally, I can just offset the viewpoint up, down, and sideways. So computer graphics is just a really interesting field because the projects you can build with it are really, really cool. So here we have a roller coaster going around a track. And um, some of the design features you can implement, like a skybox, or also known as a cube map, around the outside. It's just in a coordinate space with a much larger um, range of depth, x and y values. And so it renders in the background really nicely. And switch to train view. 